Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Irani. I'm a general surgeon and I have been in practice in Orange County, California since uh, year 2000. My main interest is uh, minimally invasive surgery which includes uh, robotic and laparoscopic uh, procedures. General surgical problems are very common in our uh, population and at times they have been underdiagnosed and even under uh, treated. Therefore, my uh, main goal is to create some short educational videos for purpose of going those uh, very common surgical problems as well as their uh, current surgical uh, treatment. However, if you need uh, more information, please uh, visit my website at uh, www.surgicaloasis.com or you may call my office at 949-646-8444. Thank you. Today I'm going to talk about hernia. The hernia of the abdominal wall is a very common in the United States. Almost uh, 800,000 people get um, surgery to repair the hernia in the United States um, per year. And uh, there are different types of hernias and today I'm going to talk about the definition of the hernias and the symptoms that can happen or complication that um, uh, can create uh, with having hernia. And then also the natural uh, history of the hernia. The risk factors that uh, increase the risk of developing hernia in your lifetime. And then on the second portion of this uh, uh, um, educational video, we're going to talk about the surgical indications as well as uh, options and uh, recovery time. Now, hernia is a defect in the abdominal wall. So whether you have weakness in the abdominal wall of the muscle or you actually have a, a defect in the abdominal wall muscle, so the content of the abdomen can protrude through that defect and uh, create that um, essentially hernia. Now, these um, hernias usually present with, uh, with a pain and discomfort, especially during the activities, the straining, heavy exercise, lifting, or um, it can uh, create a bulge that uh, comes out underneath of the skin and people feel that bulge, whether in their groin or other part of the abdominal wall. Now, hernias can be congenital or acquired. The congenital hernias usually happens in men, but female can have also congenital hernias. So there are areas of the abdominal wall that um, have some potential weaknesses and some people have more uh, than that possibility and they can develop these symptoms of a bulge and pain in the future. And that's congenital hernias. Or uh, we have acquired hernias that um, develop during their lifetime and sometimes it happens uh, with uh, trauma to the abdominal wall or people who had surgery and uh, they can develop these weaknesses on the abdominal wall. The area that they had the incision, it gets weaker and then develop the hernia. Or they can, um, hernia can happen after repetitive activities, um, heavy exercises, uh, or uh, people who do a lot of lifting during the work at work. Now, the natural history of hernia is that hernia never heal by itself. Most of the hernias, they, whether they get larger by time or they get symptomatic with pain and discomfort. And uh, of course, there are a lot of patients with a hernia that they don't have any symptoms and they get diagnosed during their physical exam by their primary physician. But most of the patients that present to the doctor for hernia, whether they present with the uh, pain or they present with the bulge or both um, at the same time. Um, hernias, they never heal and majority of times with the repetitive movements, activities, heavy exercises, they can get larger by time. So if you don't fix it, uh, that happens in the future. So let's talk about symptoms of the hernia. Majority of patients don't have any symptoms. In fact, a lot of patients called asymptomatic. They come in for physical exam and during the physical exam by their physician, they find out that they have hernias. But some people, they can present with um, signs and symptoms of hernia, which includes bulge um, or pain. Most of the patients, they notice and experience this pain and the bulge during heavy exercise activities, lifting, coughing, and they can see the bulge and uh, on and off pain and discomfort. Now, the, there are people 
that they can present initially with a complication related to the hernias. As we talked about, hernia is a hole and defect in the abdominal wall. So the contents of the abdomen can protrude through that defect. And sometimes that content of the abdomen can get stuck in that area and then create what we call incarcerated hernia. That content of the abdomen that is usually free inside the abdomen that can have potential to be incarcerated or get stuck into the uh, hernia, uh, whether it's a small intestine or large intestine, or it can be even pieces of fat inside the abdomen that can get stuck in there. And those people usually present with a persistent bulge with significant pain and discomfort, and they usually end up to go to the emergency room. And in fact, it's an emergency um, that they require emergent surgical intervention. At times, those uh, structures that get incarcerated or get trapped in that hernia, um, they can even die. Um, the circulation to that area gets compromised and that piece of the intestine or fat dies and we call that a strangulated hernia and that also an emergency. For the same reason, because it's very difficult to predict um, that whether a patient that has no symptoms of a hernia like pain or bulge can develop at times with the complication. The indication for surgery is that to fix the hernia when you diagnose the hernia, even if they don't have any signs or symptoms of pain or bulge. Now, there are some risk factors that increase your risk of developing hernia or hernia to get larger. For example, um, people who have a chronic cough or chronic constipation that they have to strain at all the time, for, uh, strain the abdominal wall, they can increase the size of the hernia or they can even push the content of the abdomen by increasing the intra-abdominal pressure and cause um, incarceration or strangulation of the hernia. The other uh, people that are very prone to develop hernias are people who have problems urinating, like people with a prostate problems that they have to strain to urinate, or people who take uh, steroids and sometimes the smokers and diabetics also have a higher risk of developing this problem. Um, obviously, hernia has something to do with uh, heavy work, heavy exercise, and repetitive lifting at work. So some people are uh, prone to develop hernias uh, due to their uh, work status. Now, there are different types of hernias that we're gonna talk about. The most common type of hernia is called inguinal hernia. And that hernia usually happens in the groin region. So in this picture, if you, um, Notice this is the abdomen, this is the umbilicus, and this is the pubic bone. The bone is right here, part of the uh, pelvic pelvis. And then, um, if you draw a line from the little uh, bony prominence on the anterior aspect or front aspect of your abdomen to this bone right in the center, and that called inguinal ligament. This is actually the, the crease uh, or fold in your groin area. And um, the hernias, the inguinal hernias, happens right above that, that fold. And exactly, um, you can see it on the left side, the right side is more common in men, almost around 5 to 10% of the men, during their lifetime, they, they have the chance or potential to develop inguinal hernias. Uh, female much less than, than men, but they also can have inguinal hernia. So the hernia or the defect that happens right above this, this line or the, the fold, it's called inguinal hernia, which is very common. There's other um, hernias in the groin area which is below this line, and that's more common in the female, that's called femoral hernia. These defects usually are smaller, they have higher chance of pain and actually a strangulation. So the majority of those people actually they present with the complication related to the hernia to the emergency room, which is 
severe pain, discomfort, persistent bulge, strangulation or incarceration. Now, the, um, the treatment of these are essentially the same that we're going to talk about in the next part. There are another type of hernias which is called abdominal wall hernias and based on the location we can call them differently but majority of them under ventral hernia or abdominal wall hernia. One of them is around the belly button. We call them an umbilical hernia or belly button hernia which people present with a bulge in their um, umbilicus or they can develop in the different areas of the abdomen like in the upper portion of the abdomen or the lateral portion of the abdominal wall in the front. Now these are called abdominal wall hernia. Now the other hernia of the abdomen that is very common and um, we call them incisional hernia. That usually happens after any type of surgical intervention. When you have an incision to the abdomen, after we repair that, obviously to close the abdomen, that area does not heal and it doesn't get a full strength of the tissue. So then, therefore, after many months, um, that area of the muscle gets weaker and then you gradually develop a bulge right underneath of the incision. So mostly actually happens in the open operations when we make big incision to enter the abdomen to perform different operations like gallbladder surgeries or bowel operations and these these um, hernias can happen anywhere in the line uh, underneath of those incision and we call them an incisional hernia. When we do minimally invasive surgery making a small incisions to enter the special instrument to perform the operation, actually the risk of incisional hernia goes down significantly because the incisions are obviously smaller. In open operation, overall, there's around 10% chance that people develop hernia in the future after the surgery. And obviously it depends on the size of the incision, that percentage can go higher or even lower. But when we do laparoscopic surgery or robotic operation through the small incision, the risk of hernia is probably less than 0.5%. So you decrease and minimize the risk of hernia significantly. Now, there are other very rare type of the hernias as well, which happens in the pelvis, uh, usually happens in the older patients, and we're not going to talk about it right now. And there's, there's other very rare hernias that happens in the back and, and the flank area. But majority of hernias that happens on the abdominal wall are in that picture that I showed you. Inguinal hernia, which is located above this um, uh, fold, um, in the groin area, and then femoral hernia, the umbilical hernia, and then the incisional hernia in different locations of the abdomen. So on the next uh, um, uh, session, uh, we're going to talk about the indication for surgery, the options for the operations, as well as the uh, recovery. Um, please, um, if you need more information about uh, uh, the type of hernias, symptoms, complications, and risk factors, please visit my website at uh, www.surgicaloasis.com or you may call my office and make an appointment for surgical evaluation. Thank you.